Welcome back. Just to briefly recap, so um, I've explained to you that by arranging domain values in a lattice, um, we can basically always ensure that we can uh, merge two lattice elements to a unique upper bound. And by um, assuring the so-called ascending chain conditions, we can actually make sure that we get termination because we can only do that merging finitely often or, um, yeah, it's, it's actually finitely often because uh, every ascending chain uh, has a finite length. So that means uh, not necessarily does the domain itself has to be finite, but it must be structured in, in such a way, uh, and the, the lattice must be structured in such a way that uh, every such chain eventually stabilizes. Now, there is one additional um, restriction that we have on flow functions, and that's what I want to talk about next. Um, so flow functions are an essential element that you need to define in every single program analysis because a flow function is sort of the, the meat, it's the, the essence of, uh, of the analysis itself. It's really telling the analysis uh, what the effect of individual statements is on the uh, domain value, on the lattice value. Um, and uh, therefore, it's really the um, thing that encodes the program semantics. Um, but there's one particular restriction on functions, and that also has to do with um, ensuring um, soundness and termination, uh, which is that these flow functions, they must be monotone. And this is also why the monotone framework is called the monotone framework, because it makes that assumption. Um, particular f is a monotone framework if in addition to everything that i've told you so far um, we have the following relationship here so what is this saying for every two elements so every two domain elements in our partial order that we um, apply f2 and for every such f um, so basically if we demand this for all the flow functions in the system um, the following has to hold. So if we apply the flow functions first to the individual elements and then merge the result, that has to be smaller um, than if we merge first across the two elements and then apply the flow function. So again, let's uh, look at this graphically. So let's say we pick two elements, X and Y, for instance, these two here. Um, if we were to apply the function f to the individual elements that could bring us, for instance, to d6 here by applying it to y and to d1 by applying it to x. Um, and now if we merge the result, uh, the results here, right, if we merge d6 and d1, uh, this will give us uh, this as the result of the left hand side here, right, so that will be d2. Uh, but now we can also do the right-hand side, right? So we can take D5 and D8 and merge them first, like you see here. And this will bring us to D3, right? So that's um, the meat of these two values. And um, now if we apply the flow function here, um, it could, for instance, lead us to this value. And that would be okay, right? Because uh, D0 is larger than D2. Right, so here this uh, unequation basically holds, right? So this relation is satisfied. But uh, there can be other situations, right? So this would also be okay. Uh, D3 uh, could be mapped by F to D2. And that's also fine because this is a smaller equals relationship, basically, right? And equals is also okay. but we are not allowed to have something like this. So um, this mapping here would lead us to D4, and D4 is not a larger value than D2, okay? Um, so what this basically means is that we are demanding that merging earlier must always yield a safe approximation. Why am I saying that? Um, so we are arranging values in the lattice because our semantics behind this is that values that are larger in the lattice, they are always more coarse grain approximations, right? So they are always safe or sound approximations 
of potentially more precise values that are further down in the lattice. And um, here on the right hand side, we are merging earlier, right? So here we are merging values before we are actually applying the flow function. And here we are merging after the flow function has already been applied. And um, that's why we are here demanding that merging earlier gives us a larger value. And uh, therefore it's also a more approximative value. You might think that this is uh, maybe an obscure and uh, tough restriction, but actually uh, in my experience, I would say that virtually all sensible flow functions are monotone. And um, if you find yourself having a non-monotone flow function, then very likely you have a very odd design and you should actually rethink this. Now, what's nice about this property is once you have this monotonicity property, um, then you actually get this guarantee um, that you can always reach fixed points. Um, let me get to this. So what is a fixed point in the first place? A fixed point is basically a point that when you reach it um, and you apply the function, in this case, a flow function to the element, you get the same element again, right? So here, for instance, we could be applying F and then we could apply it again. And then at some point, this is reaching a fixed point. And you have seen this also in the examples that I showed you, right? So uh, when we were actually propagating information to the control flow graph, we had the situation where um, we would apply a flow function to a given input at a given statement, and we would obtain the same information we have seen before. Um, so that's when we then reach a fixed point. And um, there's actually this really nice uh, fixed point theorem by Stephen Kleene. Um, it's already from 1938. Um, so that actually shows us how to compute such a fixed point. Um, and uh, it's always computable under um, the assumption that you have a monotone function. Um, because if you have such a monotone function on such a lattice, um, as we have defined it before, then you can simply go about it as follows. So you have a recursive definition and you're uh, starting point is here. So you're basically saying the first application of your flow function is being initialized with your bottom element. So like I explained earlier, we are starting the computation with bottom in our lattice. And then all we need to do is we simply continue applying F, right? It couldn't be any simpler. Um, we simply continue applying these uh, flow functions. And in the end, because we have a lattice, and uh, because also we have the ascending chain condition that we of course also need here, right? Because otherwise you could be doing this indefinitely. Um, and because the flow function is monotone, uh, we are guaranteed that at some point this will just settle. We will at some point have the situation that Fn plus one of X is the same as uh, Fn of X, and then the fixed point will be reached. And this is now um, the so-called uh, minimal fixed point that you get here. You can also do um, the same conversely for maximal fixed points. Um, that's again the situation where you would start from the top of your lattice and you would compute your way downwards. That's also possible. And oftentimes it's just a different view on the same thing. But like I said here, um, we will stick to the, the picture that I showed you earlier. Um, so essentially, if you think about this in a bit more procedural way, um, you get an implementation that uh, looks roughly like this. And um, we would compute through our lattice um, upwards, like you saw here. And um, this is then the data flow computation that your static analysis actually executes. Now, as you can imagine, the time complexity of this, um, of reaching the fixed point here, it depends on uh, what you see here in this uh, sort of um, procedural uh, representation of uh, what I showed you earlier. So it sort of depends on the height of the lattice, of course. You can, uh, sorry, um, you can imagine the uh, higher the lattice actually is, the longer uh, it will actually uh, take to reach this fixed point. I mean, that's just very natural. It also uh, depends, of course, on the cost of computing F, right? Um, 
Normally, flow functions can be computed rather quickly. Um, they're typically constant time. Um, but if you had a situation where flow function computation itself is very heavy duty, then of course, um, your analysis takes longer to terminate as well. And also, um, the cost of um, testing a quality is also a factor. Also here, typically, if you have a small and simple lattice, uh, that shouldn't be so much of a problem. Um, but in some exceptional cases, you might have very uh, complex domains and therefore complex lattice elements and determining equality might need some larger um, structural computations and then that can actually be a factor as well. But um, so Kleene's fixed point theorem, it just talks about regular functions and lattices and the ascending chain conditions. I want to talk a little bit more about how this concretely applies to static analysis. Um, you can probably already imagine it to some extent, but let me make that a bit more concrete. So in particular, we can apply this directly to the monotone framework because the monotone framework, um, it has exactly the same assumptions and restrictions as we have in Kleene's fixed point theorem, obviously not by accident, but by design, right? Um, so here we are assuming that we have a control flow graph to be analyzed that has a number of nodes. Um, so for instance, these vertices that uh, I number here, let's assume we have a finite height lattice L of possible answers um, that can be fixed or parameterized uh, by the given program. And then let's assume we have a constraint variable that we write like this. Um, for every CFG node V, right? So we basically have a, a vertex a node V that represents a program statement in the control flow graph. And this is the domain element that the analysis will assign to V, okay? Now we are generating a data flow constraint for each syntactic construct, so basically for each node that relates uh, the value of V um, to the variables um, for other nodes. And typically um, a node is directly related to its neighbors, right? So we saw that in the examples that I showed you earlier. So uh, whenever we are computing the um, data flow effect for a given statement, we are usually looking at the data flow values that we already had at predecessors of that current statement. And then we are updating these values or this mapping or environment um, so we have this dependency relationship that is encoded in the control flow graph, right? So obviously the control flow matters and um, the data flow at a given statement therefore depends directly on the data flow that we had at the immediately preceding statements. Um, we also demand that the constraints must be monotone functions. So they have this shape, but in addition, we have this monotonicity property that we demand. Then the idea is that we extract all the constraints for all the nodes in the control flow graph. And then we solve the constraints, this time using a fixed point algorithm um, that is directly based on Kleene's theorem, basically, right? So we work here in um, a product lattice. So this is the lattice L to the N where L is the lattice um, describing abstract states and N is the number of control flow graph nodes that we have. So basically um, for each individual node, we have a lattice element that we assign to it, right? That is the current analysis state, you could say for that particular statement. And we have N statements. So the entire lattice for the entire procedure is L to the N because at any given point in time, the analysis has an analysis state for every single statement in the procedure. So you could say we have uh, such a vector here and the, the first element is basically the element uh, for the first statement then the one for the second statement and then we have the one for the uh, last statement and so on. And we are computing um, the least fixed point of this combined function basically, right? So we want to um, continue computing this function until a fixed point is reached. And this solution then gives an answer um, from L, so from domain elements in L for each individual control flow graph node, right? So eventually um, the answer that you get will be such a vector. 
And the first element will be uh, the domain element for the first statement and the last one for the last and so on. So similar to what I showed you already earlier, right? We have this system again, we are generating constraints. This time uh, it's based on the control flow graph. Then we have the fixed point solver that solves it and this gives us the solution. And um, compared to what we had earlier with the type analysis, it's a different input and it's a different solver, right? So now it's not based anymore on the, con uh, on the abstract syntax tree. Now it's based on the control flow graph. And a unification solver is now not good enough anymore because uh, we need to know, uh, you know, we need to use lattices and we need to use fixed points. So now we have a fixed point solver. But essentially, apart from that, it's still a similar setting, right? That's why I'm showing you this again here. And then um, we're basically computing through this lattice, right? And um, here, we can have different answers um, that we might get. So there might be something such as a true answer, right? So for instance, in a constant propagation, this might be the true numeric value that is actually being constantly computed at that current statement that we are looking at. Um, and then there might be safe answers that approximate this value, for instance, through an interval that actually comprises this concrete true answer. But there might also be unsafe answers. For instance, uh, you could also have an interval. Well, that is an interval, but that doesn't actually contain the value in question, right? So that would be an unsafe answer. Um, and now the task of the static analysis is to do the following. So it will compute through the lattice, but it has to end up um, in the safe space, right? So it has to end up uh, in a safe approximation. And um, the nice thing about the monotone framework is now that just by the way in which it is constructed, because the flow functions are monotone and the merge operators, um, they um, actually also adhere to the lattice, um, we get by construction this guarantee that we can only get safe answers. So um, basically you cannot have anything else um, you are guaranteed that once you reach the fixed point, it will be in this uh, red area here. It cannot be anything anywhere else. And you can think of a naive fixed point iteration that would simply look as follows, right? So you would initialize everything at every statement uh, with bottom, right? So this is your initial analysis information. Um, then you take that vector you simply apply the flow function. Uh, so that means the flow functions of every single statement to the entire vector, and you continue doing that. And that's also called a chaotic iteration, right? Because you're basically uh, recomputing the value for every single statement. So for the entire vector in every single iteration, and you do that until nothing changes anymore. Um, you get by the fixed point theorem the guarantee that you have a correct and sound answer. That's what I just showed you on the previous slide. But this is sort of disadvantageous from a performance point of view because this does not exploit any special structure um, of uh, this combined lattice here or also of the flow function, right? So you're always computing all the flow function values for every single statement and every single iteration um, but like I already told you previously, um, normally when you are computing a value at a given statement, the value at that statement directly depends on the values that you have at predecessor statements and only at predecessor statements. So um, you can actually very easily show that in the monotone framework, you can have um, uh, not a chaotic iteration, but a more principled way of computing uh, the so-called maximal fixed point, and um, that exploits exactly the structure. That is called the so-called MFP assignment or maximal fixed point assignment, um, and that is computed um, as follows. So we compute this now statement-wise. So we have a maximal fixed point solution 
first of all, um, for the initial statement in your procedure. So that is the statement as zero. And that actually is being uh, initialized to the initial value that you see here. Um, but then for all the other statements, we continue as follows. So let's assume we are computing the MFP solution for some other value S, okay? And then we're computing it based on the predecessors of S only. So we are iterating through all the predecessors. We're taking their MFP values that we have computed already. We are, to each MFP value then, we are applying the flow function of the current statement we are looking at. And then we are conducting a merge, okay? So this is really what I meant when I talked about exploiting structure. So this is really only looking at the immediate predecessors and applying a merge then. Now, what's really interesting um, about this MFP solution, um, that would also hold for the solution that you get by the chaotic iteration, because in essence, they are identical, but Nonetheless, the MFP solution also has the following guarantee. Um, the MFP solution, it soundly approximates the MOP solution. So for all statements S in your procedure, you actually get the guarantee that the MFP solution that you compute this way at S, it's at least as large as the MOP solution that ideally we would like to compute for the statement, but we know we cannot compute it because it's uncomputable in general. So that gives us the guarantee that the MFP solution is always a sound approximation, right? Um, we always land in the safe area when we have reached the fixed point. And what's interesting now is that the reason for this is really this one here. Um, remember that I told you we merge earlier, right? Um, so when we merge earlier um, on the right-hand side here um, and then apply the flow function, we know that the that we get the guarantee that we are having a larger value than if we first apply the flow function and then merge, okay? Um, now, let me actually fast forward to the next slide, sorry, to this one. Um, I showed you this slide before when I was discussing the MOP solution, right? So in the MOP solution, um, we would compute all the different paths through the program, at least conceptually, assuming that we can. And then when we reach the statement in question, we take all the information from all the different paths, and then in the end, we apply the merge. So we merge at the latest possible time, okay? Now, the MFP solution, on the other hand, it merges at every control flow merge point. So it merges here, right, because two different control flows merge. It also merges here because two different control flows merge. And it does so in every single iteration. So compared to the MOP solution, it's merging a lot more often and it's also merging earlier. But uh, because we have this relationship here, we have the guarantee that therefore we get a larger answer, right? So we get a, an answer that is higher in the lattice. And that's because this here holds. And that's really essential, right? So whatever we do, as long as we have uh, a lattice, we have this ascending chain condition and we have monotone flow function, uh, we are guaranteed that we have this relationship here. That's really essential. Something that I will talk about um, in the following lectures is a special case where the flow functions, all the flow functions in your system are actually distributive. Um, and distributive functions have this property here. It basically means um, you not only get a safe answer when you merge earlier, but you actually get the same answer. It's uh, the precise answer as well, right? So it's uh, it doesn't really matter whether you merge earlier or later, you will always get the same answer. And therefore the MFP solution actually is the MOP solution. So that means for distributive frameworks, that's what these uh, frameworks are then called. For such distributive frameworks, um, the optimal solution is computable 
um, it is the MFP solution. And there are also other very nice properties about such frameworks because this MFP solution is then also computable very efficiently, actually. That's also something I'll be talking about later on when we are talking about inter-procedural program analysis, because that's where this then actually really matters. That concludes what I wanted to say about intra-procedural static analysis. So just to recap, we can compute solutions to static analysis problems through a common framework, through the monotone framework. Unfortunately, naive MOP solutions are not computable because that is an undecidable problem. But MFP solutions are computable. They require some initial values, monotone flow functions over a lattice induced by a domain and a merge operator. And also we actually require this ascending chain condition that I talked about. But then we get this nice guarantee that MOP solutions safely approximate MOP solutions, right? So we get this guarantee that we have a sound approximation. And as an additional note, if we have a distributed framework, these solutions are even identical. So we not only get safe and sound solutions, but also even precise solutions. That's all I wanted to say um, about this topic. Um, for the next lecture, we will then also be covering um, some additional advanced concepts. In particular, I will be talking a bit more about widening and narrowing, which is uh, allowing you to take sort of certain shortcuts in your lattice. Um, and that is sometimes useful to implement some performance or precision optimizations in actual static analysis as you then uh, implement them in actual software. We will be talking then. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.